Hey y'all, and welcome back tonight, man. This is your boy Top Dot, and this is Dot Street Podcast, man. Uh, how y'all feeling tonight? Hopefully everybody's all good. Uh, it's just me tonight doing an audio boy. Uh, it's gonna be a lot more of these because uh, getting back into the work. Hopefully the economy picking back up, so everything is going to get back to normal. So I will be doing my podcast basically from, you know, my home, remote location, and everything. But I still have a guest on here. Um, time to time maybe even more so than than less but yeah y'all today for tonight we're going to go ahead and get on this um this Tory Lanez thing that's going to be one of the subjects I'm going to go ahead and spit tonight man I'm spit uh my little whatever about it and um give y'all a few little facts you know what I'm saying even throw some little info up there for you one time but what's going on right now is that Mr. Lane ha- has been charged with three felonies for uh, shooting Meg Stallion. Um, one of the charges, or one of the felony um, counts is assault with a semi-automatic weapon and personal use of a firearm. Well, actually, no, I'm sorry. All the, assault with a semi-automatic weapon is one of the felonies. Personal use of a firearm is the second one of the felonies. He has a third felony carrying a loaded and unregistered firearm. Now, on top of all three of those felonies, he has two, what I call, like, sub-felonies, which is, um, but he has one sub-felony, which is many great bodily harm while discharging the firearm. So, basically, they saying that they got forensic evidence on him, and they know he shot the gun, they know he injured her, and they know she was trying to basically cover up for him so he wouldn't, um, get taken down and go to jail or nothing like that, but... They said they got evidence and they've been weighing the option of trying to charge them with everything that they charged them with and they came to the conclusion that they had just enough evidence to charge them with everything they're trying to charge them with now one thing about that is that it's two sides to the story half the people didn't think he did it half the people think he did it and the half the people that didn't think he did it when he said it, or when he was quiet and then he came back out and started basically talking again and they were basically like okay okay we listening to you we hear it you know what i'm saying we know how the, the industry is we know how some people get and all that good stuff turn around you got the magnus stallion believers it's like nah bro you are known for being aggressive you out here popping off you short you got napoleon complex and everything so we know you you're kind of mad and angry all the time at, at everybody so we're gonna go with that um me i was I played the neutral part. Um, I don't really listen to Tory Lane, so being a, I'm not super fan of him. I'm not, I don't like buy his albums or nothing like that. Um, when he come out with a song, I think he's talented as hell. I do think that. I think he got um, his rap skills then updated, then upgraded uh, a little bit. Also, he is, he can sing halfway. You know, he can harmonize, so he he got that going for him. Um, and He's making a lot of money off the albums and everything he's doing right now. I know this probably slowed up a little bit of his bag, but um, he got a lot of stuff going for him. Um, so I was trying to figure out, like, why in the hell would he do something like that? So I kind of took it from a little bit from both sides until the truth come out. Because it's always three sides to a story. Your side, they side, and the truth. So with that, young Tory now, he has some explaining to do. He got to, he got to come out and um, he got to basically he got to cover that album that he came out with, talking about how he didn't do nothing and how he wasn't um, the result of her getting shot and how he wasn't the cause of none of this and how she was just on a smear campaign and her and her homegirl was trying to take him down because he he was kind of feeling Kylie and Kylie was kind of feeling him, which is another thing. I really wish some of these celebrities would stop taking a significant other around other celebrities because it seemed like in the celebrity world, if you got a boyfriend or a girlfriend, that's basically community. You basically can pass that around, and if you don't pass that around, you're going to be looked at awkwardly. Um, I don't think that's part of the game that I want to be involved in, but I guess that's how it is when 
be rich and they did they did it has been said that uh, a lot of those rich people like passing each other around because they so used to just them them type of people you know they so used to the okay submissive and the type of folks that are you know what I'm saying just give up without too much of a fight um so if they be around a lot of them a lot of those industry people thinking hey anybody that you bring around is probably even more submissive than you because they ain't in your position but getting back to subject um him going out and making that album really doesn't bode well for him right now because now he looks like he just came out shot old girl and then he tried to make an album saying no I ain't do it everybody believe me don't believe her because she some wild girl from Texas you know I don't I don't believe people personal bars when it comes to information being outed you know I don't listen to other people when they talk about oh yeah somebody got let's say somebody got caught for it. doing something that they shouldn't have been doing with, with somebody that was underage they get caught for it they turn around and say, oh, well, such and so, he also has, like, a whole stable of, of young girls. So y'all should go hit him up and kind of leave me alone type of thing. Um, that's kind of how it sounded when he came out with the, with the album. He was basically, like, saying, nah, they talking that BS. They trying to take me down because I'm a black man and um, this black woman has got some fight against the black man and all this other jizz, jazz, and rigmarole, and right now it's looking like that's not going to work out for him at all. It's, it's looking more and more like they're going to catch him, they're going to hit him with them charges, and he's going to get some type of time. He's not going to slide away with it because they trying to make an example out of most rappers. Two, he, is, he wasn't lying when he was like, he was trying to cover his behind because he's a black man. Because, yeah, more than likely, uh, nine times out of ten, you being a black man, you also being from Canada, uh, doesn't bode well either. Not to say like our country's deeper than that, but you're basically from a whole different different country coming over here trying to stir up some things. You know what I mean? Because you like the the rap aside and all of that good stuff about the game. So you come over here and you try to build up a persona, sort of like Twenty One Savage did coming from the UK, you know, and then stripping to Atlanta for all the years and then becoming ingrained in that Atlanta culture and basically becoming an a AT alien and selling itself down until everybody found out that he was from the UK and basically he'd been over here on the work visa since he was like 16 years old. So, you know, that was pretty eye-opening. So I guess with, him, with that being an example, I'm not seeing how the American government, what we got going on right now, want basically domestic people coming in and, and starting trouble. So that's basically how they're going to format that. Now, the effectiveness of his album, it did it did what it was supposed to do because a lot of people didn't um, know about this evidence or this evidence wasn't uncovered until right now. So. When that album came out a couple weeks ago, he was in the clear. He was able to, to go ahead and say, yo, this is my side of the story. Y'all can listen to her, but I have a side of the story, too. Y'all should go ahead and listen to me. Uh, the album, I heard a few songs off of it. Pretty nice. Like I said, his skills was upgraded, so he got a pretty nice catalog um, for that album. You know, it was actually fire. I don't know if he's going to do too big of an accomplishment because a lot of the music outlets are not pushing him. Um, a lot of the major outlets are no longer pushing it either because they said basically we're not going to hold up some guy that shot some lady in the foot and then go around saying that he didn't do it and kind of halfway gloating about it. Um, we can't basically be branded to you or we can't be connected to you for a brand deal or anything like that. So they basically not even messing with his music. And I think... Um, some of the charts, some of these musical charts ain't even considering his music and seriously no more. So, that's kind of messed up, you know. All this resulted off him probably getting drunk. Uh, if girl was beating on him, like they said, um, you gotta know what situation you're putting yourself in. You know if you're going to some rich chick house and one, Kylie is much richer than me. Um, two, you know, 
you know how Kylie Jenner is. Kylie basically just goes and finds the the, the weakest link at the moment that she might want to mess with for that month or two, and she'll link herself to them. You know what I'm saying? And then, what a month or two later, she gone. Um, the only person that that got in and got in was, was Tiger and um, Travis Scott because Travis Scott, of course, got a baby by her, so he plugged it in there and was like, okay, if I got to deal with you, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna deal with you for the uh, the whole duration. So he went ahead and plugged her with seed, and now you got you know Sky, I think Skyler. Or, I'm not too sure what the baby name is. I think it's like Skylar or something like that. But they got that. But Tori don't have a baby by man. Tori's not, you know what I'm saying, man. I think he, he was messing around with her. I don't know if their relationship was solidified, solidified, but I'm thinking it was because she, I think I think it was. I think if, um, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm looking back and, and gathering information in my head, I think they were dating. And it was starting to get like super, super serious. But of course, Meg being a strong black woman from, from Texas and Corey, the goofy behind, going to another rich chick's house and basically shunning Meg is what they were saying. Basically, he was showing signs like he was showing more signs of intimacy toward Kylie than he was Meg. And of course, most women. They're not going to take that. Yeah, I know as well as y'all know, if any heterosexual man knows that you're not taking a woman that loves you around another woman that might like you. That's trouble all day long. But he decided that, man, he didn't really want to go. He didn't really want to go down the cool route. He just wanted to go, you know what I'm saying, with his out. But, I mean, from what the story is being told, that's what's being said. For me, I, I, I think he went like that. I think they went to Kylie Jenner's crib. Everybody was getting crunk off or whatever they were getting crunk off. I won't make no allegation of what was there, but most definitely alcohol, and I'm pretty sure weed. So, between being high and a little bit drunk, or probably not a little bit, probably being high as hell and drunk as hell, Tori probably was like, yo, let me see if I can take my shot at Shorty, seeing that she ain't got nobody and she always single and she down to do whatever especially with brothers so he probably was thinking hey let me go take my shot while Meg slide off somewhere Meg being a, being a black woman probably had the, the sixth sense of like oh I can tell little homie over there on BS he trying to play me that's not gonna happen they probably went in, she probably went over there to him what's up man you looking like you and, you and homegirl getting a little bit too close you know what I'm saying what's the deal he probably was like, oh, girl, quit tripping, man. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like that. I'm here with you. You my boo, all that. She probably was like, okay, cool. It probably, a little bit, the night waned on. A little bit more drinks got in the system. A little bit more weed got in the system. A little bit more rubbing and, and accidental touching probably happened. Next thing you know, that little signal from before is now a full-blown beacon. Now it's just like, yeah, yeah, come on over here and... We can do this, that, the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So, he probably slid off thinking that he got game like Nintendo and was like, yo, what's up, shorty? What's, what's good? You know what I'm saying? I seen you people from over there. I seen, you know what I'm saying? You looking back and whoop, whoop, whoop. And, you know, the radar probably went up, man. He probably went over there. What's up, man? You on that BS? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to thump you. He probably like, nah, nah. He had, no, he had his, you know what I'm saying, tall, big woman whoop on me. You know what I'm saying? In front of all of these folks that mess up my image. So, what I'm going to do, you know what I'm saying? I got the strap right here just in case anybody else want to drama with me. Seeing that nobody else want to drama with me, I think I'm going to up strap on it. I ain't going to up the strap yet. But if Shorty acting all crazy and stuff, I might have to up the strap on her and get ill. A um, couple of words probably ensued. You little hands probably got thrown. And next thing you know, we looking at. Um, we're looking at and listening to TMZ and everybody else, Vlad TV reporting that Tory Lanez has been charged. So the effect of this for this album, it worked for about a minute. And so I'm thinking the last part of uh, my analysis is what's next for him? If he gets off, hopefully he, he just 
leave this whole situation alone. Hopefully he say, yo, listen, man, yeah, I was drunk. Um, she caught me with a couple good ones. I was dazed up, man. I, I'm not even gonna lie. I, I upped the strap, and I didn't want to kill her. I'm not trying to kill her. I upped the strap, and I was trying to scare her, and I went to shoot downwards, and I accidentally pulled the trigger too early and hit her in the foot. You know, that's my fault. I didn't mean it. I apologize to you and, and all that stuff. But they that's some of the evidence they also got is um, the text message that he sent her after the whole incident happened. So that might be used against him as well. So what's next for Tori? If, if he's um, innocent, just go ahead, shut up, make your money, come out with a public apology, and you know, hopefully everybody forget about this in about a year. Now, if they got the evidence that they say they got and they got the statements and everything that they say they got and you hop into that court and they tell you nah buddy you ain't finna get off this one go ahead um, eat your Wheaties man do some push ups go ahead and get your commissary right bitch you got money so set it up to where your lawyers and everything get your commissary right man I'm pretty sure they're not gonna throw you down for 22 years and 8 months but I think they might try to give you a quarter of that, which is like at least five, five to six years. I think they might go ahead and, and throw you in in jail for about, yeah, five or six years, man. You might be going to prison for five or six years. Uh, I think they will, the great bodily harm charge is the one that's gonna stick because that actually happened. The illegal weapon charges, they could um, they could slide that under the table, but the guns was loaded. So that's a whole nother issue. Uh, believe me, I know about that, man. I got. Uh, auntie that's lawyers, I got uncles, stuff that, that deal with law, so, um, you know what I'm saying, I'm very well versed in some of these cases, and that's one of them, when you come to the guns and loaded guns, uh, each bullet in, in, when I used to live in Michigan, uh, each bullet was five years, and I think down here in the state of Florida, I, I think it was five years for regular bullet, seven years for a hollow tip, and, uh, I'm not sure about Florida down here, but I'm, uh, I'll check, but I just know that uh, in Michigan and in, in Georgia, they most definitely had the law that if you had a gun, it was a charge for the gun, and if you had any ammunition in that gun, it was separate years for that. So, yeah, he uh, he might be looking at five to six years just for having a loaded gun, shooting it, basically shoot Meg in the foot. You you're basically going to go to jail for shooting Meg in the foot. They're not going to let you just slide on that. Probably going to do about. Five, um, if you're super, super, super duper lucky, you might just get like three years, and then they might put you on like six years of probation, or something like that, so you can serve out the rest of the time. Because uh, 22 years, bro, that's a minute. And hey, pray for that brother, man. Hopefully, don't nothing happen to that man if he does go. Um, yes, if he gets off. He must have had a few blessings in the background that was needed at that time. And God gave it to him, but I'm not God, or I'm, I'm not the spirit that ruled nothing about nothing. So I, it's not too much to say. My final word is, damn, Tori, you should have done better if you did it. And if you didn't do it, stop putting yourself in that type of situation. Yeah. So, y'all, with that little subject, I'm going to switch to the next and last topic today presidential debate um who won basically who won was it was unanimous that uh Kamala Harris won uh if I'm not mistaken she won between 63 to 68 percent um was the percentile and they say she pretty much to handle her own and you know what I'm saying, did her grown woman thing when it came to answering uh, Mike Pence or rebutting back to Mike Pence, but uh, it was one thing that I think a lot of people seen that was a, uh, it was the elephant in the room with the giant red paint on it. Basically, I said giant red paint. It was the elephant in the room with the paint on it. With the red paint on it. Basically, not man one of them fully answered the question that they was asking that was asked they basically just danced around the whole thing and was just like hey well they was at one point the lady was like what do y'all think about abortion well you know what 
back in 1922 when the Indians, you know what I'm saying, was fighting the, the Europeans, um, Turkey didn't get heated up to 375 degrees. I don't know if y'all know what climate change means. You know what I mean? That's basically how they were spending it. It was just taking the question and taking it all the way to outer space, kicking it around, and then bring it right back to Earth with just a little bit of an answer for the question that was asked previously. So, them not being able to answer the damn question, that just made me realize that uh, this vice president, uh, one of them looked tired. That's uh, Mike Pence. He looks very tired. Um, Kamala Harris looked like she's full of energy, but she also looked like she's trying to put all of this together because it's, it's big for her. You know what I'm saying? She used to be a, a, a top-of-the-line prosecutor, but being a top-of-the-line prosecutor in the state of California does not equivalent to being a vice president of the entire United States. You're basically the boss of every single state. You're basically all the senators' bosses, all the mayor's bosses, and whoever else you're their boss so i think she's just taking it all in um and everything but what what kind of irritated me was the indirectness and them not being able to answer the questions that all of us american people are thinking about because for one the trump organization think it's a whole different america they just think the people people in america like all this chaos and everything that's going on and he's god king and nobody can defy his word and all that other stuff and some people are actually on that but they aren't as big as everybody thinks then you got the tired folks like us who basically are looking at this, looking at this dude and his um his team like y'all gonna do something it's basically like that beam with the with the guy poking with the stick he poking whatever somebody whatever image somebody put it could be like a a really shitty team like the Lions. <laughs> Shout out to the really shitty Lions. But um, it could be like a team like the Cavs when the Cavs were really bad, you know, and they poking like, come on, do something. That's basically how we is with our government right now. Just poking at them like, man, do something. And um, Joe Biden's team seem like they're ready and willing to take on whatever challenges. But, you know, they got they ups and they downfalls. But right now it's looking like the Biden team has a better grasp on what the American people want, what the American people need, and what the American people care about. And it just seemed like Donald Trump is thinking that this next, this is going to be just like 2016, he's going to be down uh, by some stroke of luck or some stroke of genius, it's going to, something real damaging is going to come out about the Biden team or something, he's going to be able to use it as leverage. Right now, he's basically like a boxer that's got knocked out. But for some reason, the boxer still still thinks that he's awake and, and fighting. So he's swinging while he's going down. That's basically what it's looking like right now. I hopefully, does, um, hopefully we can go ahead and get switched, man. My personal political opinions don't really matter, but I would like to see a change uh, for the better, for everything, for everybody. I would really like to see a, a calm to all this racial fucking tension. Because, yeah, man, it's... One is already hard being a black man. It's, it's also hard just being a good person out here with all this angst and anger and everything that's going on right now. White, black, purple, pink, no matter what color you are. It's, it's hard to go out here and have to deal with everybody and everything and all the BS and you just trying to keep a positive note, you know what I'm saying, to pass along. Um, so that's understandable. So I just want to see a change so everybody else can basically calm down and we can get back to enjoying our regularly scheduled program with our regularly scheduled problems, you know, and that's about it, you know, for that, but I just wanted to basically make the, um, let's go back to how we used to, not how we used to be, I don't want to say go back to how we used to be, because, you know, make sure it's some change, but go back to, um, go back with a better method of thinking. So we can change the future for anybody, you know, any anybody. I have two daughters, so I would really like to change the future for both of my my daughters. I have a grandson, um, and I'm also about to have a, a granddaughter. So I need that straight for my two grandchildren and 
with my two daughters that I got now, you know, um, and really just for anybody, man, I don't care who you are, what you are politically affiliated with, um, it's only like one group of people I, I don't really care to, to have dialogue with, and that's the KKK, and any racist type group just screams out, you know what I'm saying, rhetoric and racist, you know, dialogue. Uh, I don't care about people who are super proud of the country and super proud of who they are and all of that good stuff. That's fine with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud of who I am. And even though U.S. don't really do us black men that good, I am still proud to be in a country like this where I can, you know what I'm saying, live basically good or bad, just depending on how I take it. You know, I dig that. So I appreciate that factor. But everything else, though, Systematic racism, you know, redlining, you know what I mean, the 13th Amendment, yeah, yeah, 13th Amendment, or the 13th line in the, in the, the Constitution, not the Constitution, ah, I'm getting everything jumbled up, but, you know, the 13th Amendment, basically, um, and the 1350 and all that mess, just, hopefully we can get to a point where all that's done, you know what I mean, but, also, one little thing before I jump off, that Fly stole the show. I got to give it to the Fly. The Fly came in, caught everybody's attention because other, both of the pundits wasn't doing too much of, of nothing when it came to the verbal, uh, verbal explaining. I said verbal explaining. Like, that ain't good. Yeah, don't, don't mind me, y'all. I'll be trying to make up words on the, on the drop of a dime and stuff, but no. But the verbiage between both of the constituents just wasn't hitting. So, you know, the fly came in and was like, yo, listen, y'all, this is what I'm going to do. I'm sit on this dude here for like two minutes so y'all can pay attention to him. And then I'm going to fly off because I got something else to do. Plus, my girl waits for me at home. And I don't want to disappoint her by not being at home all the time. You know what I'm saying? So that was kind of funny, man. But, you know what I'm saying? All jokes aside, that, that was... The highlight of that entire debate was when the fly came in, landed no dude with head, Mike Pence head, and he didn't know nothing about it. I'm pretty sure when he when they went ahead and watched the playback, or when his people probably came to him, they was like, "Sir, you know you had a fly on your head for like two minutes." He probably was like, "What? Oh, well, the fly just wanted the country to be great again, I guess. You know, but that's how Mike Pence sound. He sound like." Uh, slow down tape recorder but yeah man the fly sold the show big ups to the fly man the fly had a twitter account but they hated it and took the fly twitter account down because they didn't want nobody i guess making fun of my pants or whatever you know so i guess freedom of speech is only freedom of speech when it's free for you and somebody else can get paid off or, or i guess it's only freedom of speech when you're not around big brother you know what I'm saying? But they always looking and listening. What you talking about? What, what can we do to go ahead and uh, get up in this conversation? Uh, you know, all that good stuff. But basically, today and what I want to cover today was Trey Lanes, man. Uh, we have yet to see what's going to come of this. Even though you got charged, I don't mean you're guilty, but they say they got forensic evidence and all that stuff. So we're going to see who lying. And if you are going to rap about not shooting someone, make sure you check. No, make sure you check the presses and see if you got charged. It's like you got charged because now that whole album just makes you look kind of funky. I mean, not super funky, but it makes you look kind of inconsiderate and it kind of makes you look chauvinist for. We basically saying, oh no, I didn't do it. Y'all shouldn't believe her. Y'all should believe me. That's we us men, black men especially, already got a hard time trying to explain to these women that all of us ain't the same and then you come out and do something like that. That don't bode well. But you know what I'm saying, in American courts ain't no slouch. I'm pretty sure you know about him and heard about him. Like you said, you you told Rick Ross he was marching in his city. You know what I mean? He was marching in his city for Brianna Taylor, but all in all, you got shot Meg Stallion in the foot. So, what are you trying to do? Are you with Tony? Or are you just doing what you're doing to people behind there? Get back to me with that.
then for the presidential bingo, uh, my ballot is already in. Um, I won't tell you who I voted for it because that's just that's my business. But pretty sure you can figure it out. You know, whatever. Um, and be honest with y'all, get out there and vote. Don't let people tell you that voting ain't important. It's important, man. If you want to make a change and you want to do something different and see something different, go out there and vote. It's going to make a world of difference in the future. Plus, we can galvanize our children to, to basically vote for their best representative. Because most of our representatives are dirt, dirt old and they don't have the best uh, at heart for these, this younger generation. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's our generation, my generation. So my generation let's go ahead and galvanize our kids to go ahead and make sure that change keeps on happening until change is not needed no more so y'all do that i'll stay on this microphone trying to bring this truth from the booth to y'all and hopefully y'all pass this on so with that being said y'all i would like to thank y'all for joining me tonight um like share subscribe for anybody that's um new subscribe like share um all my OG uh, subscribers, big ups to y'all. I'm gonna be giving y'all shouts out on these um, podcasts from here on out. So next one, be the first shout out, man. With that being said, y'all, y'all already know what it is, man. This is your boy Dot, and this has been Dot's view. Get with me. Oh.